We are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome. So glad that you're here. Happy Sunday to you. Happy First Line Day. On First Line Days, it's a great day to take advantage of the transiting energy. And today we're looking at getting down to the details, the fundamentals, the basics. And we have a special live event that I'm broadcasting live, both to YouTube and our private group, humandesign.live where you can see that we have lots of events scheduled. If you would like to join us, humandesign.live is where it's at. And what I'm doing today is an event called Fate, Karma, Destiny. And we're talking about the 12 profiles. We're live right now. 61 members are here with us. If you'd like to join us for this community-inspired lecture, this is specifically for dedicated students of human design. And this open live lecture is available to our general members in the group. Also, we're going to have a pause at the end of our lecture. And I would like to invite those of you who took rave cartography with me this year to come on and share your experience, your thoughts, your process, whatever is correct for you to share, if that is right for you. I will stop the live stream so that your information is not broadcast all over the internet so we can have a nice uh, dedicated group. Okay, yay, I'm so excited you guys. New, new classes are always so much fun. So this is really more of a deepening, more of a layering in of the basis of understanding of what it is for us to be human and to live these human lives. And today we're going to be talking about something that's really important to comprehending our own personal life experience on this plane. Everybody wants to know why. Why are we here? What's it all for? And I've got some really basic fundamental keynotes to give to you to hold like a, a Zen Kon or you know, a, a way of uh, processing the big, big picture of why. And it came clear to me last night and was like, wow, it's simple. It's right there. Ra gave it all to us. But just to enjoy this process of understanding our personal destiny, our fixed fates, and our transpersonal karma. Now, the words destiny, fate, and karma are used interchangeably in everyday conversation. Today, what I'm going to give you is a basis of understanding that is about our human design system. So with regards to these words, they are used as very specific symbols. They're frequency representations. Ra did that often, where we can find that he used a word and it unlocked or unpackaged a whole slew of information underneath. So just to add on some keynotes, we have personal for destiny, fixed for fate, and transpersonal for karma with regards to the fulfillment of our life's work on this plane. So when we combine these word keynotes, these formulas into strings of, you could say it's the poetry of you. It helps you unlock your particular genetic predispositions and potential to the fulfillment of the highest life experience that you were born for, that you were destined for, that is your fate, that is your way of fulfilling your karma in this life. So remember, there is no good, bad, right, wrong, better than in human design. We are going to explore why we are the way that we are and how each of us uniquely beautiful and perfect exactly as we are are fulfilling the programs programming you could say or the the wheel of samsara the wheel of birth and death and rebirth just by being alive here on this planet so i want to have everybody take a deep breath and relax that so you don't have to go looking for your destiny for your fate for your karma it's going to meet you it's meeting you already. You are already living and breathing this information in order for us to evolve, all right? So I'm going to, because we have some newcomers into the group, give you a little bit of a, a recap or a refresher, especially if it's been a while for you, having gone through the materials or maybe not even going through the materials yet. At this level, I am speaking specifically to people who have completed rave cartography.
So if you have not completed Living Your Design, Rave ABCs, and Rave Cartography, there are going to be many words that I use in a specific way that are perhaps unique or new to you. Yes, unique. The way that Raw used all these words is very unique. So that's why sometimes it's hard to really get a grasp on all of these concepts because he created something completely new as a structure, as a system, as a framework for calling people towards their path, their truth, their destiny, fate, and karma. And I feel blessed that I get to be able to be one of these messengers that is also providing the information that perhaps you are seeking right now. So welcome. It's so nice to see so many of you coming into the participant room here on Zoom. So let's study deeper into our paths of personal destiny, fixed fate, or transpersonal karma. Remember from Rave Cartography that we have specific profiles our public roles, if you will. And these ones on the screen right now are our personal destiny. We'll talk more about what that means later on. This is your personal destiny. Some of us, very few, but some of us on this planet have a fixed fate, the fixed fate profile, just one right there in the middle between the destiny and the karma. So here are the profiles where we have our transpersonal karma, transpersonal karma. Now, with regards to what I'm about to go into, some of this has been taken from the materials of my professional analyst training level one. So if that's something that you're interested in, I'm kind of giving you a taster of what it is you're going to additionally learn by going into the path of profound transformation of what it means to be able to embark on this journey of learning the system of human design, whether you're doing it for your own personal transformation, whether you're doing it for the transformation of your tribe, your people, friends, family members, clients, students. Perhaps that is your process, but all of us are here to evolve and to contribute our unique individuality towards the evolvement of humanity. We evolve through self-connection fulfillment, self-connection fulfillment, self-connection fulfillment. I'll show you why this is so important as we move towards the end of this presentation. Self-connection fulfillment is what helps us evolve. It's an evolutionary spiral. That is what our personal profiles, the costumes of our purpose in this life, move us towards. And I'll show you how that works towards the end. But now we're going to go into some details and talk about the energy of a gate. Here on this slide, you can see that we've highlighted a segment of the Rave Mandala Wheel. And you can see in the middle is gate four. And prior is gate seven, and next is gate 29. So when you look at this, you're seeing the evolutionary movement of us as we move around this wheel, cycling, spiraling, really, through life. The energy of a gate is unique, a unique place and space where we're getting programmed by this energetic flow, this energetic movement. So when you look at a profile, the 12 basic profiles, remember, they are not, um, they are gross generalities, we could say. They are not the specificity with which you came here on this planet to experience, to live and breathe and be. For example, if we take a look at this uh, lower trigram that I've just put on the slide here, that's about water. So you can see that these lower trigrams are all the same with regards to what they are at the foundation, at the core, at the essence. So the energy of a gate as we move around the mandala wheel is going to be unique to that space, that place where we have all of these different elemental foundations, the lower trigram. So here is the house of water. And as we move around, the thing that changes are the upper lines, okay? So here's the fourth line, where we move when we start the quarter of initiation, 
purpose fulfilled through mind, we start with the yang, yin, yang, yin, yin, <laughs> yang. There we go. We shifted quarters. And then we go to yin, yang, yin, yang, yin, yang, yang. It's yin. There we go. Yang and yin. So what I've just revealed for you are the fourth lines. The fourth lines are responsible for externalizing what that hexagram is about. So where we meet the fourth line is a place of rigidity and potential fragility in that they are very, very fixed. This is important to remember for a later concept. Okay, so the fourth line is where we have the shifting above and beyond when we look at the rave mandala wheel above and beyond the first three lines, the lower trigram. So remember I showed you that little water, I have this beautiful image that one of my students PTL students created Katja, where we have all of the hexagrams on the body graph showing us where the water is. You can see it right there clearly. Yeah, isn't that neat? We can find the water at the foundation and then also at the top. See the water? See the elements of the I Ching? Isn't that fabulous? I just love this image. So there we go. Processing what we are as human beings is about recognizing that we are water and fire. We are earth and mountain. We are wind and lake. We are thunder and we are heaven. Constantly combined and recombined in different ways, all of us living our path and our purpose in order to evolve. And what are we evolving towards? Self-connection fulfillment. Remember that, self-connection fulfillment. So as we look at the Ravi Ching hexagram lines, this is a reminder from those of you who took our rave cartography. Remember, we have foundation, projection, adaptation, externalize, universalize, and transition as keynotes for each of the lines. This is important to recognize because that is the essence or the natural expression or the experimentation and experience or the actual, there we go, influence. Universalize, calling out, bringing a message calling people towards something. And then the six transition is about role modeling and being at the top, looking far beyond that hexagram itself. So when we look at Ravi Ching hexagram lines, as we can see within the Ravi Ching, we have many different descriptions that are unique to that line. And there are specificities with which this shows up because remember, this is a generality. It depends on the planet. It depends on the configuration of that person's design. It really depends what's underneath. We have color, tone, and base. That makes everything different. So when you look at different systems, typing systems of understanding humans, nowhere else on this planet will you find a more rich and diverse description than you will find with human design because it's different with every person. So instead of the gross generalities, as we move into professional analyst training level one, we are going into nurturing you to see the specificity and to speak to the nature of that person's specificity, to ping the keynotes, if you will, to sing their soul song, to get them in touch with the heart and the core and the truth of what they can be. Ultimately, none of us can tell them exactly what it is or how it shows up. We can only provide bread breadcrumbs. We can provide signposts. We can get them into the human design experiment to live and breathe and discover what it is that they are here to be uniquely. Remember, gross generality, gross generality, however you want to say that. Now, when it comes to looking at the hexagram lines again, we have three processes that are internal the lower trigram, one, two, and three. And we have three processes that are external, the upper trigram, four, five, and six. Remember that, very important. One, two, and three, all internal processes. Four, five, and six are all external 
processes. So as we go through the rest of this presentation, I'm attempting to show you from the personality perspective, because that's how we group our profiles, our 12 profiles. We group them from the personality perspective. So uh, the personal destiny, when we begin with the bottom, the investigator mind, it is part of the research and development area of humanity, it. <laughs> Those of you who are ones, one, three, one, four, everything for you is about your personal foundation, what you're looking into in this life. It's about sensing into that which is unseen. So you're uncovering, you're unveiling, you're digging down, you're going deep. You're studying, 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 studying. Your whole life is about getting down to the foundational elements and the details. Remember, personal destiny. Research and development is part of your life's work. So the two profiles we have, investigator with an opportunist body and the investigator with a martyr body. In the career language, we use it as first line being an authority because through all that research, you develop an expertise. You become an authority on some topic, whatever it is that is correct for you to investigate. And then what does the body do? The body goes out and influences its familiars. The body goes out and is a pioneer of what it's discovered. That's the research and development. That's the personal destiny. The first line being an investigator, it is all about their own personal process. So the most selfish, self-absorbed, self-involved, the one three. Why? Because it is the only profile where both lines of its profile, its public role, our lower trigram, the investigator mind, digging down deep, sensing, going down what, to what is unseen. So we can take a look at an example here. Let's imagine that this is a gate 14, line one. Money isn't everything, says the line one. It's going down deep into what? Into its own personal process of embodiment, gate 14, the gate of power skills going into its own sensing of its own personal destiny. So it's going into the internal. It's going into the unseen. It is researching, 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 researching. And then what is it doing? It's going into the self of its foundation and sensing. And depending on which one it is, it's going to either influence through its opportunities, through its network, or it's going to be a pioneer through its own trial and erroring. So do you see how each of them can be broken down into a fundamental basis of mind first that gets us to the heart and the core of the truth of what's important for this person? Self. Remember, one is self, okay? Self first. Self first always. And so what happens as the child, the one, three, banging into things that don't work, investigating, investigating, self-absorbed, self-involved, selfish, other people looking at them going, what the heck is wrong with you? Why are you always about yourself? That's the judgment of your mind when you've been raised incorrectly and trained to believe other people's judgments of you. That's why human design is so freaking powerful. I freaking love it because it's so cool to show people there is no choice here you are an investigator you are an authority authoritative pioneering person if you are a one three and we need our one threes just like we need our one fours much more rare to be a one four and yet we absolutely need them for the connection as you'll see you'll see soon so let's move on to the hermit mind which is also personal. And now we're talking about projection. Remember the fundamental essence of any hexagram is at the foundation, it's the one. What that hexagram is naturally, giftedly, expressively projecting out unaware is about being able to think and project, not sense, 
but now we're moving up to thinking. And so we have our two fours and our two fives, our hermit minds with either an opportunist body that becomes an influencer or a heretic body that is the messenger. Natural, talented, gifted. These are our gifted and talented people, by the way. If you start looking at all the people who are famous, you will find an inordinate amount of two fours because they are the ones who are seen, because they project out. They are like someone inside of a house with the windows out or windows open and the lights on inside, but outside it's dark. Everybody's looking internally, looking at that hermit. The hermit has no idea. The hermit wants to be left alone, but it too has a personal destiny. It too is part of the research and development of humanity. When we look at these people who are research and development twos, they are about thinking, thinking minds. These are thinking minds. So if we were to take a look again at this example here with the gate 14, now we're looking at a mind that moves out, but natural, unaware. Its destiny is about projection, where it may feel nervous about what other people are seeing in them because it has no idea, it doesn't know. It's dancing and other people are watching. This is still internal, but now it's seen. Remember the first line was about the unseen? Here it's seen. And we have the second line with its self-projection thinking its thinking process, its process of being called, waiting for the call, second lines, waiting for the call, who calls them out? Well, anyone can really, but whose job is it? Type into the chat, just going to engage with you guys who are here. Who makes the call? What is the line that makes the call? Do you guys remember? I'm here. I'm right here. I've got so many fifth lines, it's ridiculous. Fifth lines call you. Yeah, it's excellent. The fifth line is responsible for putting out the call. Go to jovianarchive.com, type in Clarion Call. You will see a video that I took on a long time ago, bought and took on the mission of a long time ago, answered the call of Ra Uruhu, 5-1. So the self-projection thinking, they're waiting for a call, some kind of call that pulls at them, that tugs at their heartstrings, at their heart authority, that they get emotionally clear on if they are emotional, solar plexus defined, and so forth and so on. So this is the research, the personal destiny profile, the 2-4 that is about having its own personal process manifest without any kind of memory of past life experience, their own personal process. So what happens with the twos mentally? Oh, they want to be left alone, but their bodies are looking for the opportunity and to influence their network. Their bodies are heretics and putting out a call. Isn't that interesting? So that is our two profile. Now let's look at the third line, the martyr mind. They are too also personal destiny, research and development. The third line, experiencing trial and error, bonds made and broken, is about adaptation. Adaptation to the conditions and circumstances for material success. The third line, the material line of all lines, is where we meet the material plane. So we have our three fives. Hi! this is me, martyr, heretic, here to be a pioneer, here to be a messenger. We have the three sixes. We have our martyr role models who are pioneer leaders according to the career and business labeling. So let's look at that third line. Its destiny is to make and break bonds. Its destiny is to experience what does not work. Its destiny None of us, none of us can choose our destiny and none of us can escape it. One of my favorite lines from this, um, I love fantasy shows, Merlin, if you've ever watched it, personal destiny. The dragon told Merlin, 
none of us can choose our destiny. And the deeper that you study the human design system, the more you recognize the truth of it. When you do not study the human design system and you go on in oblivion, not recognizing how controlled you are by the planets, by the transits, by the partnerships, by the people, by everything in your life other than your own authority. Oh boy, is it a wake up call? That's why this processing of this material can be such a profound transformation. Now, the transformation of processing the material does not fix the problem. The problem is our minds that misidentify with the word I inside of our heads about ourselves that thinks, therefore what thinks it is, who we are. That's the core of the truth of the message I really hope you can hear from me. Now, if we look at the third line, Marta Mind Destiny, we are looking at the personal destiny research and development that is banging into something, doesn't know what's on the other side, but it's banging in to those things that it can be resilient and adaptable about. It's banging into things by chance, by happenstance. So that is how the third line martyr mind experiences life. What can go wrong will go wrong. When you enter into it correctly, according to your strategy and authority, it is the greatest gift because now you can teach from the experience of what did not work. If you are honest and if you have the availability, the integrity to admit, the courage to admit past mistakes. That is one of the third lines. So we look at our third line now instead of self talking about connection connection that is accidental, not looked for, connection and adaptation through feeling. That is what our third line research and development is all about. So again, we look at our profiles, our martyr heretics, the great world scientists that pioneer and put out the call. We have our martyr role models that pioneer and lead by example, not by trying to get anybody, desiring anybody to follow them, but through their innocence of being who they are. Now let's look at the opportunist mind. Here is where we have the shift. Remember I showed you that slide that we had all those fourth lines on it? Here's the shift from personal destiny into fixed fate. So now the fourth line is the body. For those of you who are studying, what do you remember about fourth line as far as keynotes? Tell me, we have keynotes of externalization, networking, keynotes of the fourth line is the great line of starts with a B. Do you remember what I'm talking about? I know there's a delay, so I'll wait a little bit longer. Really want you guys to grasp this. Anytime I really want to land something with you, I ask the question because when it calls, when I call you out, to give me an answer, it goes into your cellular structure when you recall, when you remember these words. There's a real big fallacy when you're learning something that if you listen to somebody, you get familiar with what they're saying, that it's actually integrated and it's not. You're just getting familiar with the word phrases. It's not integrated yet. The word B, gate 40, line four, there's your key. What is the word? It starts with a B. Fourth line is the great wor word of, it's another F too. 13 line four. 13 line four. People fatigue, fatigue. Therefore, 30 line four. Burnout. Body burnout. That's how I want you to remember that the fourth line is body. The opportunist mind, which is personal or fixed as a profile. Okay. Externalize. It's very difficult to externalize. You have to externalize to your network to penetrate deep into the network. That network needs to be strong. It takes a lot of energy and juice to make friends. Have you noticed fourth lines? There's nobody that isn't a friend. They're just friends. They haven't met yet. <laughs> I don't really get the fourth line. It's not my process. I've only got one and it's in Saturn. But it takes a lot of energy. Friends are a drain on your energy if that's not what gives you juice. But even still, listening to somebody, gate 13 listening, fourth line, 
you're taking in someone deeply and it can be exhausting, fatiguing. Okay. So remember, fourth line, body, research and development, the personal destiny is the four six. Now take a look at this. This is a very unique profile. Just like we had the uniqueness of the one three, that was the bottom trigram. Now take a look at the four six. What do you notice, even though this is personal destiny, what do you notice about this line and this line, four and six, relative to the structure of the hexagram? What do you notice? If this one three is lower trigram, this four six is language, both lines in the upper trigram. Excellent, Julia, thank you. So this is the mistake Lavina made back in the day. Don't want you to make my mistake. One of my first practiced foundational analysts analysis analyses. I started talking about uh, transpersonal karma because all I remembered was four and six upper trigram, therefore transpersonal. Both transpersonal lines, however, this is not transpersonal karma. This is still personal destiny. So this is where we don't have a continuation of the pattern that everything else is based upon. Okay, the four, six, upper trigram, still personal destiny. Don't make Lavina's mistake. Four, one. Now we are talking about fixed fate, externalizing to the network. Opportunists from the mind, but from the body and investigator. These are people who are designed to investigate deeply and externalize that foundation to their network. They are an influential authority. And one of the reasons Ra Uruhu chose Linda Bunnell to custodian the IHDS, the International Human Design School, because she is a 4-1. Fours are friendly, warm, available to influence through their network taking that foundation and putting it out without any embellishment, because that is what they're here for. Now, the difference here with fixed fate is that because it is on this transi transition point between personal destiny and transpersonal karma, which the 5253626363 profiles are, it can go either way, but its fate is fixed. Either way, as in there may be some personal destiny mixed in with some transpersonal karma. However, their fate is their own. It's not up to anybody to change their fate. It's fixed. So if you have a 4-1, I haven't come across many of them in my practice, but if you have a 4-1, 4-1 child, try not to mess with their fate, hey? They're on a fixed track. Think like a train track. It's going in this one direction and there's no stopping it. Okay, fourth line is body. So when we see the fourth line, we see the opportunist. We see the process of its externalization, its body, mixing, mingling, making friends, but also having a deep need for alone time. Why? Because it gets burnt out. It gets fatigued. Okay, it gets people fatigue. So remember that. It's got a bit of a fragility here. Now let's look at the line four. Where is it going? It's going to the other side. It's reaching out for the other. It's seeking, it's searching, it's looking for that connection. Remember the word connection. Just like the three was like, I know there's something on the other side. It just bangs into it. But the four is actually looking, seeking, and finding through its network when it's correct for it to bond with the right people. It makes long-term bonds as opposed to the third line bonds made and broken bonds made and broken not true with the four it's destiny four six or its fate four one has to do with building strong networks of people really important to grasp that their network is everything so if you're using the system professionally remember those fours in your life they are really designed to be with their people, their people. All of us have our people. All of us have our fractal, okay? Help them find their way 
through aligning to their decision-making strategy, strategy and authority, so that that opportunist mind can find the bonds that are fulfilling for it through its network, always. Again, the fourth line body, personal destiny for the four six opportunist role model and influential leader, and the four one fixed fate, opportunist investigator and influential authority. So as we look to the fifth line, the fifth line and its heretic mind, we are talking about soul here, transpersonal karma. So not no longer are we in the, the personal destiny. Remember, there's a lot of personal destiny, a lot of research and development. Now we have people whose incarnative purpose is to fulfill a transpersonal karma with others. Karma as in, there is some need to fulfill or redo or make up for past life transgressions, potentially, with specific others. So there is a need for the five ones, five twos, six twos, six threes to fulfill their karmic interactions with the right people. They need allies, soul for the fifth line. The fifth line is the embodiment of soul. So now universalizing is the path and purpose of all fifth lines making the call, putting out the call, wherever you have a five, that is the soul of that hexagram. The ancient I Ching would call all fifth lines exalted in that it was what everybody expects of that hexagram. So there's this huge initial positive projection field that happens with fives, five ones, five twos. They have a soul that they are here to engage with and universalize and put out in the world, put out that call, of course, in alignment with their strategy and authority. So the fifth line heretic, similar to the two in that it's in the window, but the lights are out. It's looking out, it's peeking through the blinds. It is there to be rescuers, savers, fixers, saints, saviors. Aren't those beautiful words? And yet it carries with them a heavy burden. Ra said, the hopes and dreams of humanity rests on the shoulders of the fives. It's a big task. All of us are here to embrace our task in alignment with what's correct for us. But these fives, these fives, very, very key to our current age, our current age that is crumbling. We need you fives, wake up. Transpersonal karma propaganda, the heretic mind, it is reaching not only the other side through the channel definition, but beyond into the stream or the flow of energy. So it's not just about the gate process anymore. It's looking towards the flow of energy or through the awareness streams, which you learned in your we introduced in ABCs and you learned deeper in your rave cartography. So fives are here to connect with strangers as opposed to the friends of the network, strangers. It can be a very isolating life, isolated life to be a five one, five two. They are only here for specific people who can hear their call, who are available to respond or guide or impact or be surprised by life. So again, the fifth line is soul, the fulfillment of the universalizing soul. That's our five one five twos, our heretic investigators and our heretic hermits who become authorities or natural expressions of their gate themes, of their incarnation cross, really, because that's coming. These are the imprints, these keynotes, these profiles are the imprints of four planetary activations, conscious sun earth, unconscious sun earth. So we have our fives who are the universalizing fulfillment of soul. Six line, last line, almost there, guys, transpersonal karma. 
the propaganda of getting the word out of the trigram, or sorry, the hexagram, the complete hexagram, our role model minds, transpersonal karma, are about spirit. So spirit is transition. Really, the end of a hexagram's uniqueness is right here at the five. That's why this is a line of transition, looking beyond that hexagram's process and beyond into the expression of spirit, transpersonal karma. So you can see in our house metaphor that Ra gave us, that little guy up on the roof, transpersonal karma is about transition, looking beyond, seeing long range view, detached, unattached being a role model after going through its three-stage life process of trial and error in the first 30 years, withdrawing up to the roof from 20, sorry, 30 to 50 for 20 years. And then at somewhere around their Chiron cycle, going back down into the world and living as an example of spirit, the essence of the nature of what it is to be alive as a new kind of human. Our six lines are more evolved, you could say, Buddha, Bodhisattva are the lines. So you're looking at someone who may seem aloof to you, maybe not involved. It depends on where you meet them and what the rest of their design is like. So we're looking at, oops, forgot to animate this one. Line six in our example, looking at the same uh, conceptual, visual um, perception, we're looking at looking beyond, not just the stream or the flow of energy, but throughout to the lines of, or the elements of circuitry. So ultimately the embodiment of empowerment in this case, looking beyond to what is next, external process of the 6-2 and the six three, the six line being spirit. So our transition to the fulfillment of spirit embodied by our six two role model hermits who become, oops, leader natural, that's right, leader naturals. And then the six three role model martyr that become the leader pioneers, spirit, transpersonal karma. Now, as I've moved you through these profiles, stepped it down really slow, and you know, patiently, one thing at a time. You might have noticed the first binary of theme, the second binary theme, a theme of self. There we go. Start over again, Lavina. First binary theme of self, the second binary theme of connection, and the third binary theme of fulfillment. These are the nature of our profiles. Self connection, fulfillment, self connection, fulfillment. And why is that important? Every single one of us, when we are not self, we feel that disconnect. We feel that disconnection from self. So we all go through this evolutionary process where we are looking for our individuation. And if we're not aware and we're following the mind, we're taken further and further away from our truth. What human design does as an experiment is give you the tools and techniques to make decisions that you can trust that bring you home closer to self, that give you the connection you're looking for, not only with self, but also, also with others, and gives you the fulfillment that we were destined for, our binary couplet themes, as Ra called them, binary one, two, three, four, five, six, the linking of these binaries. One, two, self, three, four, connection, five, six, fulfillment. We are about self connection, fulfillment. If you've been through my rave ABCs or you've studied much into rave cosmology, you'll know that Ra talks about the biverse being an unborn child. This first binary of personal self destiny is the expression of the foundation and projection of each of the 64 ways that humans can move or be programmed, we could say. Because it is always about movement. So we have the line one, unseen, internal. The line two, seen and still internal. 
We have the second binary, which is connecting through destiny, through fate, our adaptation and our externalization through our connections with others, internal chance, banging into things, accidental, oops, didn't know that was there. And then the line four, external, actually looking and finding that network of friends. Remember to enter into it correctly. Otherwise, this is very, very painful as a process. And that connection won't be fulfilling. It won't be sweet. It won't be satisfying. With regards to the hexagram itself and its structure, this is the most dynamic place within where there's the most movement and fragility. Third line's more adaptable to that movement. Fourth line's more fragile with that movement. Fixed, we could say. Okay, so there is a need for all of us to honor the way that we're here to operate. Rather than obeying mind, let who you are come to the surface, to the forefront, to the flow. That third binary, karma fulfillment, we're looking at universalization and transition, where we have our external connection with strangers. And our external, what's next, with line six, the transition beyond. So our life purpose, you could say, of foundation, projection, adaptation, externalize, universalize, transition, is about self, connection, fulfillment. Self, connection, fulfillment. We are all experiences of the movement of our expression of consciousness in form, this experimentation of what it is to be human with self-realization, with self-fulfillment, self-connection fulfillment. So we have the internal unseen and seen. We have the internal chance and the external looking. We have the external connection and the external next. Our life purpose evolves through this process, the costumes of our purpose through self, connection, fulfillment, is about evolutionary, dynamic tension. All profiles are critical to the full evolutionary development and expression of humanity through self, connection, fulfillment. So now the right angle profiles are research, innocence, and truth. Each of us who come into this world with a personal destiny on the right angle crosses are about our geometry being limited with regards to the importance of our interaction with others, meaning it's our own personal process, our own personal destiny. When we reincarnated, we were wiped clean with regards to the connection with specific others. The right angles are the research and development department of our hexagrams, our essential aspect to the whole of humanity. If you've ever worked in a lab, the R&D, we are the R&D, okay? Research and development, research, innocence, truth. Remember that for the personal destiny. You, if you are here, were gifted with the ability to explore new areas of life without prejudice, clean slate. You're here to discover and uniquely live out your own personal destiny, born fresh and new with an innocent open vessel, built to be fully self-absorbed, self-involved. Some of us more than others, as we looked at earlier. Some of us way more than others, okay? So right angles usually will deal with very difficult situations in this life, particularly when it comes to family life. So honoring your experimental process, remember R&D, with the material that the totality needs to experience in order for all of us to learn and grow. We are being used quite literally by life. And when you are used successfully, it's sweet. When you are used unsuccessfully and incorrectly, it's sour. As a projector, I've been there. I've done that. I know what that's like. I know that movie and that game. If I can only reach one person who really gets what I'm saying, oh my God, it would be such a gift to have somebody else see what I see. I'm doing my best to showing you what the human design system is all about. From the context of no choice, 
There is no choice to change this program. We cannot change what is there laid out for us from the stars. The structure never changes. Our imprint, what we were born with, what we were born for, never changes. None of us choose our destiny. None of us can escape it. But when you're making decisions in honoring of the truth inherent within you, now it becomes spiritually evolved. It's breathed into, you're breathed into by life. You get sweetness of success, the spirit of the projector. You get satisfaction of using your energy correctly, the spirit of the generator. You get the peace of operating independently and correctly for you without any control mechanisms on you, with, with your full sovereignty of freedom, manifester. And for the reflector, you get the surprise of life. Might be a good surprise. Might be a surprise you don't like so much. But the surprise, the wonderment, the awe of experiencing life on track, on path, and on purpose, there is nothing like it. There's nothing like this, being this, who we are, for ourselves if we're generative, for others if we're projectors, for our impact to be able to inform for manifestors and to be initiated into that surprise by life, by the lunar cycle, for the reflectors is this greatest gift to have this experience and this expression of research, innocence, and truth. Now, as we move to the fixed fate, the 4-1, we are looking at only one profile, which is born with a fixed fate in life to fulfill. This means the quality of your movement in space is not de designed to be altered by anyone. It's completely and utterly your own. And you act like a bridge between the personal destiny and the transpersonal karma people to come. It's a communication bridge. Ra called it juxtaposition. Big word. What does it mean? Putting two things side by side to compare and contrast. Okay. So literally, you are comparing and contrasting and, and being that thematic of what it is to hold together our evolutionary process in your own way, bridging the two very different kinds of geometry, personal destiny and transpersonal karma. You're weaving people together. Remember, it's about people. Fourth line, strong foundation, externalization to the network, weaving the right and left angle together, following your own specific path. Imagine the train tracks, specific path through life that you are perfectly designed to walk in alignment with your authority, being your own authority. So this is always a fourth line personality. So that means that brotherhood and sisterhood is very important for this person. Friendship, family, your success, satisfaction, so forth, with regards to evolving, depends on two things. You're here to investigate some body of information, a foundation, establish a strong foundation. So you have to make sure that you're standing on solid ground of a secure knowledge base that works, not shifting sands, but nice, solid foundation. Then what you do is you use your innate ability to externalize and influence your network with that information. Channel theme, fixed fate. Investing your time and energy into opportunities with various relationships that come to you, which are correct for you, is key for you. And those people that you invest your time and energy to will reward you with whatever it is that's correct for that exchange. So you're here to reach those others through your decision-making strategy, influence those people with the knowledge that you've gained through your investigations. And in that way, you fulfill your fixed fate, your one-trackedness. Now, last but not least, we have our karma people, our marketing and our role models, our left angle transpersonal karma. 
where we have the universalization and transition, less of humanity, but still very, very, very important. Only four of the 12 profiles of our 12 basic generic profiles come into this world on a left angle with our transpersonal karma to fulfill. Left angles call out the others or lead by example. They have the potential to alter other people's movement through life. And this is also true in the reverse, that other people's involvement can be altering of their movement because remember, it's transpersonal. So for left angles, every left angle, every person you meet has not only a karmic thread of connection to you, but are also potentially a value for you. Your interaction may have a level of faint familiarity or intense recognition. And you as a left angle are here to play a role in that person's life. Of course, ultimately, always with regards to your decision making strategy, strategy and authority will align you to maybe just giving directions, tons of casual conversations, strangers, lots of strangers, a just in time rescue, or maybe a life altering transformation of other people's lives because of your work in the world your being of yourself. When you pay attention to the right people in your life, it makes a huge difference in your process as a transpersonal karma person. The great mystery of what it means to be a left angle is that sometimes these seemingly inconsequential encounters make an enormous difference in your entire life. So left angles are each here. Are to, they're going to transmit the truth of what us as right angles discovered. So research and development. Okay, we're taking that process and we're moving it out into the world. Remember, marketing and role model propaganda, we could say. Fifth line likes to stand on its soapbox, dispensing its heresy. Incorrectness, of course, in alignment. Universalizing what is practical. They have a call and sometimes it don't feel good. It can be very guilt trippy, depending on the design. While the sixth line verifies and exemplifies whatever that process of that life is about, bringing that to the next hexagram by being a living example of it, a role model of it in regards to the chain of evolutionary spiral as a line of transition, it's moving beyond even, moving beyond. We don't really know exactly what's in store for us when our six beings come to full flowering of their unique human potential, particularly as we move into an age, 2027, where the background frequency will now be, instead of a first line, we'll go into a six line that process of evolution to become the unique, authentic truth through embodiment. So left angles, you bear the responsibility of transforming our discoveries, our right angle discoveries into knowledge that can be of value to others.